Quiet, please. The Queen Yushla, August Akharja, to Anarcha Rob Egon, to Spontus, Enronach, Eintach, Allen, Shaw, and Yo, and Gaia. It's, it's, you're very welcome to this extraordinary exhibition. Uh, I am 50 years, over 50 years working with exhibitions, but I've never experienced anything quite like Joe Hogan's work before. So it's an absolute pleasure to have him and so much exciting and thrilling work. He is an absolute master craftsman and I feel very privileged because so is John Behan, who is of course our opener. John told me once he would like to be remembered as a craftsman. But like Joe, he mastered his materials and then began to express himself in a most remarkable and exciting and individual way. One of Ireland's great sculptors as well. So would you please welcome John B. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here assembled, as James Joyce said one time in a, a very famous satirical poem, but we're not here for that reason tonight. We're here assembled, and I say it with great and profound uh, sincerity, a master of his work. And to be a master of work is the highest achievement in your career and it doesn't matter what art form it takes but here we have tonight somebody who has taken on a very specific subject matter in terms of his, his treatment of the materials which express his own inner feelings and thoughts and in a very natural way now the sculptor forms are woven uh, from mostly but not exclusively from Willow. Willow is something I could never master when I was fiddling around with things in my earlier days. But Joe Hogan is the master, in this country anyway, and probably worldwide, of his craft. Now, <clears throat> Tom Kenny mentioned that you can be a very good craftsman and in that way, you can be a superior artist. I think it was Georges Rouault, who, who was a French painter of great renown, uh, said, I would rather be a very good or great craftsman rather than be an indifferent or bad artist. Joe Hogan doesn't have to worry about these things. He's, he is accomplished. Uh, mastery over his material as I say that there's nobody else in this country or anywhere else for that matter that has done it so well I won't go on too long because you know as I say Abra Abraham Lincoln made uh, the Gettysburg address in two and a half minutes and that's sufficient <laughs> for anybody <laughs> as that proved so um, I'll just talk about the forms. The form is everything in sculpture and in the crafts of pottery and in basket weaving and anything else that you may care to mention. Form is the basis of all Greek art and it's the form of ancient art. It's the form of modern art. And Joe Hogan has this in abundance. Every piece here is formed. It's not just put together. It, much more than that. He has created a world in itself and within the world he has created all of this art that we see here tonight. I call it art and not craft because it goes way beyond the usual expectation of craft work. Uh, you can, when you come into the room, Dean Kelly mentioned it, you can smell the exhibition. It's sensuous. It's all embracing. It attacks you in the best sense of the word. And it makes you think. And it makes you more than anything. It makes you look. Looking is the essence of visual art. 
It always has been and it always will be. Um, <clears throat> we have this unique interpretation of the nest. Now, Patrick Kavanagh, who was a very sensitive nature poet in his own right, has said, I have a word for the nest for the bird. And he, he meant by that uh, his own creativity uh, in terms of his poetry, that he was finding a place in nature for his own words and his own work and his own thoughts. And these nests here remind me very much of what Kavanagh meant by that s small statement. A small state that, statement that became very big because it was the uh, quintessence of Kavanagh's work and it is the quintessence of this work, this wonderful series of nests that we see here tonight. Um, we should, with all of this work, we should look and we should give ourselves to it because on the surface, as Ernest Hemingway said, of the tip of the iceberg, you only see the tip, but underneath that is the essence of what an artist should be saying. You don't have to overstate. Understatement is usually far more effective. Um, and in these nests, and in everything really, but in, in that sense, I think Joe Hogan has created a new vision, uh, a new essence, um, for us to observe, to look, and to really love and open ourselves out to. Um, now, number one, which is over on that wall behind most people, uh, is um, a very unique piece to this exhibition, and indeed to any piece of weaving that I've seen with willow or any other material. Uh, it is really a masterpiece and it's a touchstone for this exhibition. And I suggest when you're looking around, you could start with that and then work your way into the, into the entire exhibition. Um, the creativity in this show is something that melds with nature and becomes art. Grow before as I grew with nature. Again, Kavanagh. Uh, he had insights into the country that Joe Hogan shares with him that no other Irish poet had, really had. He threw himself on the earth, he said. He, he surrendered. Uh, and in this exhibition you have that surrender to nature and the use of natural materials. Uh, that's real creativity. It's using what's there. It's not uh, inventing uh, in an abstract way. It's coming from the earth. Uh, the, um, in number three, for example, duality with woven skill at both ends of the timber. You know, you see it over there uh, with a, a tree trunk that is, could be the figure, a figure of a man or woman. And then it's on top, you have this amazing kind of uh, weaving together of the final end statement, if you like. There's more than one of these. Uh, they're around the exhibition. There's one over at the window there, in between the two windows. Um, there's more of them. There's also the skip here, which is in its own right a masterpiece. It has got colour, it's got form. It is a potato basket, a skid, as Joe calls it. Uh, and that reminds me of the famine and of all of the things in our culture that are touchstones for us uh, and something we cannot ignore. Then we have the imaginative things of the, the, the nest here, which is a, a most original creation. Um, and I can go on. As I said, I'm not going on forever, though. And we have the big woven <coughs> uh, basket over there with the timber on top. There are a number of examples, but that one reminds me, and Joe is so aware of the fact that we have a coracle culture in Ireland 
The last uh, remnants of that was on the River Boyne. Joe has it in his books. And uh, that's essential to, to our culture as well. And it's done so beautifully uh, in a creative way that you can feel the rhythm of a corrigal, the rhythm of the river, and all of the things that go to make that essentially uh, a visual, in my view, a masterpiece of its kind. And there's more of that. And then there's the baskets there, the cone-shaped baskets. And they remind us of <coughs> exterior and interior, what's inside there. There's the mystery. Now, the ingenuity of Joe Hogan's work is quite fabulous. And when I use the word fabulous, I mean in the sense of fable and mystique and nature coming together in one statement that we have here tonight. Um, the, um, the exhibition, it engages and then it challenges the viewer. You can't get away from it. You must look in, look deeply, and yet the mystery remains at the end of your viewing. And that's art, all of art is a mystery. There is no solution. That's what makes it art. That's the essential quality that you look for. Uh, this also begs the question as to what is art, whether it be great craftsman, uh, a great craftsperson, or an indifferent artist, as I meant, but it's definitely somebody who is committed obsessively, if you like. There is an obsession about this work. Somebody asked Francis Bacon one time, how do I become a great artist? And Bacon said, you go into a room with your materials, you close the door, and you work. That's how you become a great artist. And this is what Joe Hogan has done, essentially. Um, uh, now, the, <clears throat> the exhibition pushes, as I said, the boundaries to the limit of the possibilities of the material. That is ex ex essential about this exhibition. And you must see it in terms of that. There's lichen, there's fur, uh, there's the wood, there's all kinds of timber um, in this exhibition. And that's worth looking out for because that will give you the picture and the story behind the impulse. And the impulse is in the finished work. Uh, in, the, in fact, this work here, it possesses a ceremonial quality there is, which makes it sacred, you know. There's very few works that I've seen in recent years that have this quality. It is um, essential to our own natures and what we know, and especially if uh, you come to terms with what Joe Hogan is using, materials that surround us in the countryside, everywhere, every day, visual things, objects like trees, like uh, the reeds, like the lichen, like everything else. Um, I can't say very much more because, as I say, the mystery remains here. When you go home tonight and when you wake up tomorrow, you will still remember this work because it's so essential, it's so creative. And uh, long may Joe Hogan continue. The achievement is enormous. Uh, there are people here, I'm sure, who know Joe's work, but there are others, perhaps, who don't. And for the first time, they're confronted with the work. And the more I look, the more I wonder that one person, to kind of paraphrase Goldsmith's uh, The Deserted Village, that one person can produce from within their mind, within their spirit, work of such great quality. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. That was just wonderful. Uh, can I make a suggestion to you? Uh, it's wonderful looking at such a big crowd at this exhibition. But if you come back, first of all, you will get that awe of the smell as you walk in the door. But secondly, you can walk around each piece because they are three-dimensional walk-around pieces. And it is well worth coming back for that reason, to see them in quieter times, even though it's wonderful to see so many. Sorry, to add to that, Tom, excuse me, uh, 
These works are for sale, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they're a perfect just spare decoration. I was getting to that myself. Oh, Tom, Tom was very modest. <laughs> before, I, before I go, I want to say that. And the prices are remarkably reasonable. Exactly. So uh, please think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. So that's it. Could, Thank could, you for your attention. Yeah. Could I ask Joe a question? Uh, obviously, John emphasized, I think, what we all think is a wonder, wonderful skill, wonderful work, and long may it last. <clears throat> it, if I jump ahead a little, did it ever occur to you, say, to bring a political sphere in, in, into your work, particularly now with the Mercure policy about the rainforest and our farmers, you know, they don't want any more soul plants, and yet we have, in, 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 you know, inferior beef coming from here, which we have the most wonderful work back. And another factor is, is our community, and I think everybody would, would, would back me up on this. Say, for instance, our, our rural community, post offices, police stations are vanishing quietly. It's like a virus. Would you ever think you're bringing that into your, into your work? I think it's in it, but it's not in it in that overt way. Yes. And I think uh, sometimes it's better. I, I feel it's more real sometimes. It, I think if you just try to put a message in, it mightn't be real. Yeah. Uh, you might strain it too much, but I think these nest things are about belonging in the world. Correct. And I think if you, if you take one idea like that deeply, and explore it. I, I think it, everything has a yeah. political uh, implication, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah. I, I wouldn't strain it too much. No. Uh, I just find it kind of comes out in its own way. Yeah, you know? see, yeah. yeah. It's part of the mystery, Michael. You have to go and find it <laughs> yourself as well. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Joe. All right. Thanks. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, Joe.